In this section, I'm going to explain what a weighted average is and how it pertains to chemistry, especially when dealing with isotopes and the periodic table. First, we're going to look at what a weighted average is. So take a look at these M&Ms. I want you to imagine that each of the regular M&Ms, the smaller ones, has a mass of one gram. And each of the larger ones has a mass of three grams, just for the sake of this demonstration, the peanut M&Ms will have a mass of 3 grams. So to figure out the average of this, we would take 1 plus 3 divided by 2, because we're dividing by two numbers, 1 and 3. That is the arithmetic average. So 1 plus 3 over 2, and that gives us an average of 2. But if we're looking at this particular set of M&Ms, it doesn't really seem fair that the average of this set of M&Ms is 2 or 2 grams because there are not equal numbers of both amounts of M&Ms. There's way more of the regular M&Ms than the peanut M&Ms. So it doesn't make sense that this average would be 2 grams. We just did a normal arithmetic average. What we are going to do to find the average of this particular set of M&Ms is we're going to find a weighted average. Now what a weighted average does is it's an average, but it takes into account the amounts of different things that you have. It doesn't make them all equal. So we have more regular M&Ms than we have peanut M&Ms, so they're going to be counted as more. We have six of them. So because we have six of those regular M&Ms, we're going to take six of each of those, which is they have a mass of one, and two of the larger ones having a mass of three, and we get an average of 1.5 grams. This is an average that represents our sample, and our sample had more regular M&Ms, so the number is going to actually be closer to one than it is to three. Let's take a look at a different sample. So this different sample is going to have more of the peanut M&Ms. Now we set up our normal weighted average math problem. We have the regular M&Ms, there are three of those, and they have a mass of one each, so one plus one plus one. And there are five peanut M&Ms, and they have a mass of three grams each. So we'll do three plus three plus three plus three plus three. And we have a total of eight M&Ms here. So five of the large ones and three of the smaller ones. We divide that by eight and we get 2.25. That's a different average than we had for our first set because there are more peanut M&Ms. It's a higher average than our first set because there are more of the heavier M&M. Hopefully you're starting to see the difference between a normal average or an arithmetic average and a weighted average. Another way we could write this is three times one, because there are three M&Ms that have a mass of one, plus five times three, because we have five M&Ms that have a mass of three, all over eight, which is our total amount of M&Ms. We would still get the same number. We would still get 2.25. So that's the second way that you could represent this weighted mean or weighted average. Another way you could represent this weighted average is by taking three eighths because 3 eighths of the sample has a mass of 1 gram, so 3 eighths times 1, plus 5 eighths, because 5 eighths of the sample has a mass of 3 grams, so we take 5 eighths times 3, and that would also equal 2.25. So that 8, that 3 eighths and 5 eighths, we didn't divide by 8 because we already did it within the problem. So notice how in the previous example I divided by 8, and in the, the next example I divided by 8 within each particular multiplication system. So this is another way of doing the exact same problem. The final way that we can represent this is by using a decimal or a percentage. 3 eighths, if I turn that into a percentage or a decimal, it's 37.5% or 0.375. I'm going to multiply it by 1. 5 eighths, if I turn that into a decimal, it's 62.5% or 0.625 multiplied by 3, and I also get 2.25. So this is four ways of representing the exact same problem, and this is a weighted average. So it's an average that takes into account quantities in my sample. 
So what does all of this have to do with chemistry? It just so happens that the number that you see on the periodic table for the atomic mass of different elements, it happens to be an average of all of the different isotopes of that particular element. Now isotopes exist in different abundances and this number, this mass that you see on the periodic table takes into account the quantities of each different type of isotope of that element. For example, lithium has two stable isotopes, lithium-6 and lithium-7. So I'm going to kind of represent those nuclei down below here. So we have lithium-6, which has three protons and three neutrons. And then we have lithium-7, which has three protons and four neutrons. So lithium-7 is a little bit heavier than lithium-6. 7.5% 7 of all the lithium is lithium-6 and 92.5% of all the lithium is lithium-7. Now lithium-6 has a mass of about 6 AMU and lithium-7 has a mass of about 7 AMU. The average or the number on the periodic table is really close to 7, it's 6.94. The reason it's really close to 7 is because most of the lithium is lithium-7, 92.5% of it is. The rest is a little lighter, it's 6 AMU, and that lighter isotope is bringing down that average to 6.94. So we are going to spend the rest of the time calculating weighted averages. So here's an example question. Carbon occurs in nature as a mixture of atoms. 98.89% of it has a mass of 12.0000 AMU. The rest has a mass of 13.00335 AMU. We are going to calculate the atomic weight of carbon. So this is going to be a weighted average. I'm going to set up the problem just like the m and the last m and problem. 0.9889 is our percentage in a decimal form. We're going to multiply that by the mass of that particular isotope. 0.0111 is the percentage in decimal form of the heavier isotope and the mass of that isotope is 13.00335 AMU. I'm going to bring up a calculator and do this problem. Make sure you keep the parentheses in so your calculator knows what order to do the operations in. So I use I open a parentheses and type in 0.9889 times 12.0000. The zeros aren't really necessary, but I want to keep those in there and keep them in my mind because they are significant figures. I'm going to add that to, in parentheses, 0.0111 times 13.00335, and I get 12.01. I'm going to keep the 1 there, so 12.01 is, is going to be my answer. And what you'll notice about this is it's really, really close to 12, and that should make perfect sense. The reason that little 1 is there, that little 0 .01, the reason that's a 0 .01 and not 0, 00 is because there is, most of it is, has a mass of 12 AMU and a tiny, tiny, tiny little 1% of it is heavier, 13.00335 AMU. That little bit that's heavier causes the whole average to increase just a tiny little bit. So we have the 0 0.01. Now I want you to pause the video here and try to solve this problem on your own. So we have naturally occurring argon, three isotopes of it, and we want to determine the average atomic mass of this argon. 0.34% of it has a mass of 35.9676 AMU, 0.07% of it has a mass of 37.9627 AMU, and the rest is heavier with a mass of 39.9624 AMU. Now here's a mistake a lot of people make. When they're taking a percentage and turning it into a decimal, if that percentage already is a decimal, a lot of times people forget to move the decimal over twice. So 0.34% would be equal to 0.0034. 0.07% would be equal to 0 0.0007. 
and 99.59% would be equivalent to 0.9959. I multiplied each of these percentages by its mass in parentheses and I added the three chunks together. So I will type all of this into a calculator and I'm expecting something close to 39.96 because most of the argon is that heavy. So I'm expecting something close to 40 but less than 39.96 because the other isotopes are lighter. Close my parentheses and add the last isotope, 0.9959 times 39.9624 equals 39.9474. I'm going to keep six significant digits on this just because my masses have six significant digits I'm gonna really just treat those percentages as if they're exact numbers even though I know they're not I want to try to keep a, a bunch of sig figs on this this question so my answer is 39.9474 AMU is that close to 39.9624 it is is it less than 39.9624? It is. It should be close to 39.9624 because most of the argon 40, uh, most of the argon is argon 40, and it should be just slightly less than 39.9624 because the rest of the isotopes are lighter. So a greater amount is argon 40 in very, very small quantities are argon 36 and 38.